If there's one thing that Americans can agree on, it's that nobody is happy. It doesn't matter what side of any particular fence you're falling on, you're probably feeling pretty disenchanted with how things are going in America. This could mean that you're unhappy with the current political status, the upcoming elections, the options that you have for said elections, the way that the voting process works, or maybe it's something unrelated to politics. You may be unhappy with how expensive housing has become or what few prospects you have for the future of your career, or just a sense of impending doom that that things are going to fall apart, or maybe you've become convinced that the U.S. dollar is going to collapse and everything is going to fall apart. Maybe the national debt is too high. We can go on and on. But the one thing that everyone is agreeing upon is that they aren't happy. There's no group who's actually getting what they want. Everyone's divided. Everyone's angry with each other, but mostly we all agree that this is misdirection from powers that be that are keeping things status quo because they're benefiting from it. And the one thing that is a common answer that people keep coming up with is that the American dream is dead and or it could be redefined as the new American dream is to leave America. Is this really the answer? Is this what you could be doing? Well, we've done some videos for our Canadian neighbors, and as an American, it's time I do one for us, which includes most of you. It's the largest group of my audience, and it's time to face this as Americans and talk about how the current status of America applies to us as, yes, potential expats, as those who are fulfilling the new American dream. For a long time, the American dream was kind of undefined, but it was basically go get a stable job, work decently hard, save up, make good money, and be able to buy a beautiful house in a nice safe area, raise kids, have a wonderful family, retire at a reasonable age, and have good health care going into retirement. These are things that Americans have dreamed about having for themselves, their children, their offspring, their, their ongoing ecosystem for a very long time, and things that our parents and grandparents and great-grandparents worked very hard believing they were building for us, but that American dream is effectively gone. Very few of us have that notion in our heads anymore and even fewer have any faith that it could someday come to fruition for them. There's loads of reasons why people are feeling disenchanted with the United States and with many other countries. And there's many reasons why the world is just a very overwhelming place these days. And it's also true that with modern technology changes, a lot of things are happening that are not specific to places like the United States. It's just that as Americans, we feel these things too. And so people around the world uh, are dealing with things like changes from new AI or social media or uh, any number automation of jobs. Any number of things are just presenting lots of global change and and that is scary and overwhelming on top of any things that may be happening in our own countries or localities. So when you put this all together, we're feeling a lot of weight. And I'm of an older generation, Gen X, who is going through this. And for every generation after mine, this kind of mental stress is just worse. Each generation is, is getting it compounded. The boomers are really the last ones who had any semblance of being able to achieve the American dream in the traditional sense, if anyone truly ever did. And even for them, many of them, as they are only now reaching retirement, are facing the fact that it often isn't coming to fruition for them either. They may have seen older boomers be able to do it, but the younger boomers are facing a new reality that the economy has collapsed, mostly because of COVID, ahead of their ability to actually ride through retirement. So a lot of people are, are feeling this panic and what do they do? Well, we have seen so many people, I talk to people every day, as you can imagine, being the kind of channel that we are, that there's simply a redefining of what the American dream is. And I've seen so many people say this specific thing, that the new American dream is to leave America. And I know that sounds trite and silly, and it's to get a point across, we all understand that, but there's some truth to it, and I want to dig into this. So the things that we generally consider to be associated with the American dream, the beautiful house, the tranquil environment, the safety, the place to raise your kids, a future hope, and just tranquil, like this wonderful life, 
those things are actually quite often obtainable for Americans. Not every American. Some Americans are stuck for one reason or another, and that is unfortunate. And some Americans are able to live out the traditional American dream still in America, but the number of them is getting pretty small and dwindling every day. But for a great number of Americans, an actual reality is there, and that reality is that one, the ability to emigrate, to move abroad, either temporarily, permanently, or we could say part-time as well, moving in and out of the U.S., is something that is extremely obtainable. And for most people who are looking at doing that, there is the very real possibility that by doing so, you may, may be able to achieve the very things that we used to associate with success in America. For me, and this is a very specific case, but we will talk about this a little bit, is my family chose Nicaragua, and Nicaragua specifically addresses so many of the shortcoming, shortcomings happening in America today that coming here, we were able to have the house and beautiful yard that we couldn't have in the United States. We're able to have the safety that we weren't able to have in the United States. Now, that's a lot closer. That is not a dramatic. Some people are going to be like, it's really not that much safer. It's only a little bit safer, right? But important things like safety in schools and in public spaces is far better, right? That's, that's really important for us. We're not fearful of our children simply going shopping or going to restaurants or going to a show, things that in the United States would be very scary all the time, and especially going to school. Uh, being able to afford uh, staff to, to clean and take care of different things, the ability to afford uh, uh, medicine and medical care, right? Able to have really good health care at very affordable prices, these are things we would never be able to consider having in the United States, but by moving to Nicaragua, they are easy to have. Many of the freedoms that we often associate that we talk about having in the United States are actually dwindling there as well, but are much more obtainable in other countries. Now, these vary by country. Some will have different mixes. Some will have more of certain things, less of others. So partially, this is part of the process of discovering the right country for you, figuring out the mix of things that is best for you. You may care about certain aspects much more than others, or maybe certain ones apply to you much more than others. And so finding places that prioritize the freedom that matter to you or the uh, cost of living features that apply to you rather than ones that you care about but are not specific to you is important as well. I'm sure you've heard of lots of people who have made threats that depending on how the election goes or how the economy fares, that they're going to pack up and leave the United States. And that's a reasonable threat to make, uh, but most people, it's an empty threat. But why have it be an empty threat? Consider the possibility of following through. And I'm not saying that you're the ones who've made such a claim, but it's something to seriously consider. People are saying it all the time. And if you need to say it, you need to think about why you're saying it. You're clearly coming to a mental place where you have realized that the United States is not or may not be in the near future a place where you want to be. But there's some reasons to think about putting this kind of protection into action. One is that there is the possibility that the places you are interested in moving to or that would best suit your needs in the future may start limiting or completely cut off the ability of Americans to move to those countries. Right now, Americans still retain the ability to move nearly anywhere in the world quite easily. There are exceptions, but they are certainly exceptions. They are not the norm. That could change. And even if it's unlikely to change on a broad scale, the possibility of it changing for the exact places you are most interested in is generally where it's most likely to potentially happen. So that's one consideration. But a far bigger risk is that there's going to potentially be a closing off of the ability to exit the country. This is something that has been kicked around and something that people are legitimately scared about. If this was a fear for you in any way whatsoever, that you would even consider it a possibility, this tells you that you feel you're living in a prison where they haven't shut the doors yet. And you really need to think about what you're going to do to protect yourself and your family for the long haul. Once you're outside the country, you have a lot of protections, but as long as you're in it, you have the risk that the borders will close. Now, that's an unprecedented step, but it is one that is certainly being kicked around as a possibility as the migration of people from North America begins to ramp up more and more. The countries are beginning to worry about these things because they see not only is there a trend, and this remains a very small amount, a trickle becoming a constant stream, but anything like a river or a dam breaking, but there is an increase in people flooding out of the North American country. 
countries. It just, they, people are rapidly recognizing that the American and Canadian dreams are dead and they don't appear to have a way to be resuscitated. There's no real hope for Gen X, Gen Y and Gen Z, Gen Y being millennials in, in Gen Alpha, that there's going to be any real good positive future. They're simply looking at a future that involves the countries that they're coming from declining at varying paces over their lifetimes. That's a really depressing thought. And if those countries are already in a place where they're not happy with them, a decline is going to be pretty horrific. Now, if everything is perfect for you in America, everything's perfect for you in Canada, and a decline simply means it's not quite as perfect, but it's still the best possible thing, great, then you should definitely stay. But if you're in a position where you're like, this isn't doing it for me, I really want to find the right place, you're not going to benefit by waiting to do so. You're not going to benefit by seeing how it goes. You know it's not going to go great. If it did go great, of course, you could always return. It's not like you're giving that up. You're not throwing away your citizenship or anything of the sort. We assume don't do that. But moving abroad gives you a lot of power and protection and doing it early gives you the most options and opportunity to gain insight and Let's face it, life is short and you can spend your time being angry and worrying and upset and disappointed or you can try to find your happy place. And I say this a lot, if the sooner you pack up, go out and find the place that makes you happy, that meets your needs best, the longer you will get to live there. And the longer you live there, the more opportunity you have to become embraced by that community, the longer you have to learn how things work and be better at it and just it all becomes more fluid. And if the thing you end up really enjoying, or some of you will discover this only after you move the first time, you really love the process of going to a new place. And it's not necessarily about the place that you go, but that you like the adventure of the entire process. And again, the sooner you do that, the sooner you get to do it again. If you want to spend your life moving from place to place every three years and you wait until you only have a few years left, you only get to move a few times. But if you do it much earlier, you may get to do it, you know, dozens of times. So that's an important consideration as well. No matter what it is you're looking at, chances are the sooner you put becoming an expat into motion, the not just the sooner you'll get benefits from it, but the greater those benefits will end up being at any given moment. You gain by moving sooner. The American dream doesn't have to be dead for you. In fact, it might be better than ever. But you have to be a bit flexible about it and maybe redefine exactly what it means. And some of those mental pictures you've had of living in the New York suburbs that was defined by the Dick Van Dyke show in the 1960s. Yeah, you might not be able to have exactly that. But the idea that you're going to live in a peaceful place that is absolutely beautiful, that is super safe, that it's a wonderful place to raise your kids, that gives you maybe not the school you imagine them going to, but the opportunities to get a better education, that maybe you're not going to go to a hospital you pictured, but the opportunities for better, better health care are available. And maybe everything about your life is going to be a little bit different. But instead of being the dream that was spoon fed to you and an image that was put in a in a magazine in the 1960s, and instead you have to kind of find the right picture that's perfect for you. And while for me that ended up being Nicaragua, for a lot of people that could be somewhere in Europe or very popular is Southeast Asia. There's a lot of places that are going to have a slightly different take on what paradise could be for you. And you should really investigate and start thinking about what you can do to intentionally choose the best place for you and your family. And the sooner you go, the sooner you can tell others and maybe drag some of your ecosystem along with you. Maybe some of them will travel to where you are. Some of them may move with you. Some of them may move nearby. Some may move to a completely different part of the world, learning from your example and adjusting as uh, is perfect for them to fulfill their vision uh, or their uh, take on their American dream. But that dream could still be alive. And for me, it sounds weird to say, but in many ways, I have fulfilled my American dream. I essentially have the white picket fence. It's just a black metal fence with a beautiful pergola. And I love the solid weather and I love my community and I get to have my dogs with me running around the yard and I get to raise my kids in a wonderful family oriented environment. These are really important things. And this is me fulfilling that American picture.
that was given to me as a child that we were all given as children. Growing up in America, we have the white picket fence. We have the little farmhouse. We have that beautiful yard. And yes, I have a beautiful yard, but here most people opt for trees or gardens or yeah, things are slightly different. We're not having tea in the afternoon. We're having coffee in the morning, but little tweaks, things that are inconsequential, but you can still focus on those big concepts of that, that beautiful family life you can find it. It's not out of your reach. It's just not necessarily where you thought it was going to be. So don't consider the American dream to have completely gone up in smoke. Simply work to redefine it in a practical sense. The world has globalized. The American dream has to globalize along with it. It's only natural. So this isn't really that surprising. This is the natural evolution of something that has always been a moving target. It was not that long ago in the American experience perspective to think of the American dream being to not be stuck in Europe, to not have to work in a factory, to be able to have lots of open land, to explore the Wild West. We had lots of things that have been the vision of the American dream over a long period of time. And that white picket fence vision is relatively recent. The whole idea that Americans would live in suburbs only arose in the late 50s, early 1960s. Before that, that was not something that people thought about. The suburbs basically didn't exist. We invented them during the last couple generations, a couple generations before me, that is maybe a few more before you. So that it's going to evolve for us, just like it did for our parents and their parents, is only to be expected. Just the leap that we're making feels like it's a little bit broader. But is it? I'm not so sure it is. Now, that being said, I really believe that, you know, understanding that you're feeling frustrated with America, you embracing the fact that, look, it doesn't mean you don't love America. It doesn't mean that it wasn't great in your childhood. It doesn't mean that there aren't a lot of advantages of being American. It's simply being honest and saying, look, there's a lot of things going on, whether it's jobs, careers, economy, safety, uh, uh, politics, you name it, something or some group of things is going to very likely be making you unhappy with the current American experience. Accept that. Own it for what it is, an unfortunate situation, but a real situation nonetheless. And then understand that chances are you as an American have the power to choose almost completely where you want to live. There's almost nowhere that's going to bar you if you really put in the effort. And some places are super easy. Some are just a little bit more effort. And you can go to those places and you can choose to enact the dream that you want to have. And in some of those cases, that may involve retiring. In some of those cases, it may be going and starting a business somewhere. In other cases, it may be taking a job in the place you want to go to. It varies by where you want to go, what your age is, what your skills are, what your desire of work and income is going to be. Everyone is different. There's no one cookie cutter that, that defines the experience for everyone. But that there is this option out there for you that you can leverage being an American right now really well around the world, that you can take control of your own situation and enact that American dream. There are some people who will not be able to do so, right? It is unfortunate that not everyone everywhere has the power to do this, but nearly everyone does. If you're watching my videos, chances are you do. I encourage you to seriously entertain voting with your wallet, voting with your residency, whether that vote is for something specific or just voting that you're unhappy with the current situation, you have the power to make things better for you, for your family. All that being said, an additional question needs to come up. And that is, why are so many Americans specifically so interested in Nicaragua? Now, I'm here in Nicaragua, so of course, I'm going to have a little bit to talk about in this space. But a lot of Americans and Canadians, especially, have a ton of very specific interest, not only in leaving the United States, but in finding out more about Nicaragua. And this comes for a lot of reasons. Of course, for those of us who are my age or older, we grew up with the experience of the United States and Nicaragua being at odds militarily for a long period of time without any clear explanation as to why Nicaragua was seen as an enemy of sorts. 
That never made a lot of sense, and when you live here, it makes even less sense, but the US and Nicaragua have been going at it for over 170 years. So this is something that is basically ingrained in both cultures at this point. So there's a natural animosity, there's a natural oil and water butting heads kind of relationship at a, at a global scale between these countries. So that is a starting point, and that alone makes Nicaragua in many ways to Americans feel exotic. But the United States government and the Canadian government as well put in a lot of effort to discredit Nicaragua, to make claims about it, to push people away from it, to use fear mongering, to make people not even give it a try. And that alone, while a ton of people that does effectively push away for people who are inquisitive, people who are disenfranchised with the American experience, it should make them say, wait, there's some reason America doesn't want me to see what's behind the curtain. Maybe I should go to investigate. And so there's a natural curiosity that comes up simply because there's so much effort put into convincing you not to look. They don't want you to find out. And those things are very real. I was having this discussion last night about my true belief that if Americans were exposed to Nicaragua on a large scale, it would create an instant uprising. If Americans understood how much could be done with so little tax revenue, if they understood how easy it was to do the things that we're told can't be done, if they understood how practically no income, practically no tax base is able to create universal health care and how roads are able to be taken care of so well and how we're able to do so many public works and that the tax rate can be so low and that there's just so, so much safety and that the air is clean and there's so much great stuff and there's problems for sure, but problems that come from massive poverty and are being overcome in so many cases it, irrelevant, right, to the fact that there is the staggering lack of GDP, somehow there's still enough resources to do things that America is consistently unable to do. And the excuse in America is always, well, we can't afford to do those things. We just don't have the financial resources. It would be crippling to try to do that. And if you came to Nicaragua, you would so often say, but wait, 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 how... How is it claimed to be so expensive, and yet I'm watching it be done on a budget, the entire budget of Nicaragua, even if you expanded it to the, to the population size of the United States, is still a tiny budget. If that was the portion of the budget that we put into fixing all these things, we'd have so much left over in the budget that we have. Something doesn't add up. It takes no effort to see that it doesn't add up. So America really fears people discovering those things coming to places like Nicaragua. Nicaragua happens to be a nearby example where it's very hard to say, well, it's a different part of the world. Nope, same part, right? Oh, well, they have, you know, some far-flung cultural thing that makes this possible and we don't. Nope, same culture, right? Everything's way too close. So to have these excuses, they need places like Nicaragua to not be heavily visited. And then the few people who do visit it and they come home and they're like, you would not believe they have universal health care, even though they have no money. People are like, nope, their health care is no good. No, no, no. I think it's better than it. Nope, nope. Can't be right. It's easy to discredit it when there's only a few voices. But when you have everybody going, no, we all saw it. Right. The emperor is not wearing any clothes. That's the reality of life in the United States. The emperor isn't wearing any clothes, but no one's ever confident in pointing it out. And so we're still in that mode of, yeah, there's a couple kids running around going, wait, the emperor is naked. But all the parents are like, no, 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 shh, shh, shh. He's got a nice new robe on. Don't say anything, right? That's where we are. And so that really draws people who are inquisitive, people who want to learn, even if Nicaragua doesn't have a specific thing for you, and maybe it's the wrong country for you, it can still make it super interesting to just learn more, not just about Nicaragua, not just about Latin America, Central America, but to learn an awful lot about the United States and North America as a counterpoint to Central America. And so I think that for Americans who are feeling that real strong disappointment in what's happening in the United States now. And that could be, again, with the country, it could be with the population, it could be with happenstance. But if you're feeling that disappointment, if you're feeling like they've let you down, and so many people who want to, maybe some people are doing this honestly, but it doesn't feel honest. They're trying to trick you or bully you into giving your resources to them. And they'll say things like, you, you should fix it from the inside. You owe it to somebody. You should, like all these things you should do, and they mean you should stay. You shouldn't leave. And the reason that they say this is because as long as you stay, they get your tax money. As long as you stay, they get your labor. As long as you stay, 
They control your vote. Your voice doesn't fight theirs. Your opinion doesn't go into a pool to strengthen other people with your opinions. Your voice, your opinion, your tax dollars, everything that you stand for, it doesn't matter what that is, is gerrymandered into whatever the government wants it to be. Your voice can be used against you and often is you have no say in what your opinion is on a grand scale. Yeah, in your local community, you can get up on your soapbox, your literal soapbox, and yell to people. And people who want to listen can choose to do so. But when it comes to a real scale, when it comes to getting your voice out there, your voice goes into a pool that you do not control. And those who want to misuse you and abuse you for their own purposes will use terms like you should try to change things from the inside. We all know that's not how things actually change, especially when the inside doesn't have a vote, doesn't have a voice. They'll say, you owe it to America to stay behind and be mistreated by them. You don't owe anybody who's mistreated you anything, right? They owe you. And if they say that to you, they owe you more, right? That's a mental abusive term. Don't let people say it to you. When you hear it, say, wow, I got to get away from people who would say this and people who would protect people who say this. Those are toxic people. Those are people who are looking to do you harm and are willing to try to make you feel badly for them trying to abuse you. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. Consider maybe moving abroad, not necessarily Nicaragua, but finding a happy place for you and your family may be the way that you can actually positively enact a real beneficial future for you, your family, your offspring. Certainly consider coming to Nicaragua, even if this isn't a place that you want to come to live. Maybe it would be a great place for you to come and spend three months, six months, and just see what alternative living can be like. Explore the world outside the United States, get a completely different perspective, enjoy a little bit of a completely different culture with wonderful food and wonderful people in great degree of safety. Bring, you know, some, some light shorts and t-shirts because it's quite warm, especially if you're not staying for the long haul. But it is a really great place to break yourself of being steeped in Americanism. And maybe you'll just fall in love and decide it's a place you want to stay. Nicaragua would love to have you. But if it's just a place you're going to visit, hey, it's great just to have new friends come and visit us from time to time as well as you begin your journey to finding the right place for you. We're very close to the United States, very good time zones, great weather, just so much just come down. And there's no barrier. You can come down from the United States right now, 90 days at the border, six months after you do your extensions in country. And then if you decide you're going to do another six months, all you have to do is step into Costa Rica for a day. You can be here for a year. You don't even have to think about it. Right? Come down, make your decisions from here. Do your planning from here. Take your moment to recharge, reevaluate the world. Do so from a place that's safe and welcoming. We understand if this isn't your final destination. But it's a great place to use to find your final destination. As always, uh, if you'd like to help support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. It helps a lot with making this channel possible. And uh, of course, we do have our membership. There's a join button down below. You can click on that and help with a monthly contribution. Helps build this community and keep us all going day to day. It really does take a lot to make this show. So I really, really, really appreciate everyone who helps to make this possible. And I will see all of you tomorrow.